pleasure of serving as the president of the advisory board of the Black American Council here at Cuyahoga Community College. I would like to welcome you to the second annual Black and Brown Male Summit. The theme for this event is Healing and Inspiring Men of Color. This event was sponsored by the Black American Council in partnership with the Hispanic Council here at Tri-C. We are encouraged that the speakers that you will hear, hear from today will inspire and energize you to continue your academic and professional journey and bring about the healing and feelings of oppression that we as men of color have endured over many years. The Black American Council, the BAC, was founded in 1969 as the Black Caucus. The world was a very different place back then, but the fight remains the same. The mission of the BAC has also remained the same, to support and encourage students, faculty, and staff to enable them to achieve their academic and professional goals. The Black Caucus became the Black American Council in 2015 and the focus continues to be on equity and inclusive excellence, particularly as it applies to our students, faculty, and staff of color. Throughout the program today, you will hear from a list of professionals that will offer you encouragement and useful tools to assist you in your own journey. The Black American Council is active on all four of our major campuses throughout, and throughout the year, the BAC has provided virtual student forums including the college and faculty staff, as well as community leaders as speakers. We have held several workshops and have continued our virtual drop-in uh, center for students under the leadership of Dr. Christopher Hawkins and Mr. Jock Smith. Students can access the drop-in center directly from the BAC website with just one click to get in. The BAC offers several programs throughout the year for our minority male, male students, including the Minority Male Leadership Academy and the Black Scholars Academy, both under the mentoring program of the BAC. The BAC currently has over 260 mentees and 148 faculty mentors to service students. The BAC offers scholarships to deserving students. The Francis Franklin Scholarship Luncheon is our signature event where we celebrate the academic success of our students and award scholarships to deserving students. This past year, the BAC awarded over $29,350 in merit, honor, and essay scholarships to deserving students. We plan to award at this level or even higher this year. This celebration will be held on May the 6th from 1130 to 1230 in a virtual celebration. Tickets and registration for this event are available on the BAC website. I would like to thank the, committee, the planning committee with the chairman, Dr. Terry A. Webb, for making today's event possible. And a special thank you to Mr. Jock Smith for his leadership and management and the oversight of all the BAC programs and events. Any questions you may have today, if you are watching on WebEx, can be entered into the WebEx chat. So I welcome you to the Black and Brown Male Summit. Sit back, relax, and enjoy today. I would like to now bring up Mr. Jock Smith, Program Manager of the Black American Council. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Jacques Smith. I'm the program manager of the Black American Council here at Cuyahoga Community College, where we serve all the campuses of Tri-C. We are housed at the Metropolitan Campus, but we have capability to be at all the campuses that we serve here at the college. As Dr. Uh, Stewart mentioned, the Black American Council has been around since 1969, which makes us one of the first organizations um, within the college, which was founded in 1963. We do a lot to make sure our students have the tools they need to succeed academically and personally. Founded as the Black Caucus, and until 2015, when we formally changed our name to the Black American Council, our goal initially was to make sure that our students um, were taken care of and our faculty and staff. Initially starting making sure that our students, our faculty and staff had what they needed to succeed, it, it evolved into making sure our students were doing well and had what they needed. So I stand before you today as the program manager of the Black American Council to encourage students 
who are here at Tri-C to be a part of our program once you're here at Tri-C and while you're here at Tri-C because we do make a difference. I am proud to say we have a 92% retention rate for our students from fall to spring semester. We do graduate our students at an 86% rate and we have 289 mentees through our program right now and we have over 170 mentors which are our faculty and staff who serve as mentors. But I stand here also today as a product of the Black American Council, the Black Caucus. When I was a student here at Cuyahoga Community College, I was a part of the Black Caucus as a student mentee, and my mentor, who I still keep in touch with till today, really helped me get to the next level and made sure I was doing well and had what I needed to succeed, all the way to the point of graduation from Cuyahoga Community College into when I went to Cleveland State as a full junior from Tri-C. So, Definitely, I had a lot of things in place for me here at the college that helped me go to my next level when I got to my four-year institution and beyond, on to even receiving my MBA, up until the point where I was able to come here almost 23 years ago and start working at the college in the marketing department. And then an opportunity opened for me to become the program manager, and I jumped on board with that immediately. Because all my time of being an employee here, I was a mentor, and I still am a mentor to students here at Tri-C. So the Black American Council has changed my life and it will change your life as well as mentees, as students here at Tri-C. So I encourage anyone who's interested in being a part of the Black American Council to please visit our webpage, which is on our agendas today and within our chat, um, to become members because we do make a difference in our students' lives and we also work closely with our Hispanic Council. We say we're a sibling you know, here at the college. We work hand in hand with the Hispanic Council, which was founded in 1993 here at the college. We do a lot of things collaboratively to make sure, again, our students have the tools they need to succeed. So I invite you to become members of the Black American Council if you are not. If you have any questions about the Black American Council or anything that you, when you, when you would like to become a student here at Tri-C, tri we can help you. When you become a part of the Black American Council, you're in a family, we hold on to you, and we keep you here. So I invite you to please visit our webpage, become active with the Black American Council, and reach out to us because we really do care, and this is truly where your future begins here at the college. So with that being said, I am very pleased to bring up, once again, Dr. Stewart. So I have the pleasure of introducing you to a great man. He is the president of Cuyahoga Community College and one of the biggest supporters of the Black American Council and the Hispanic Council. He was the driving force who pushed us to start to develop this summit and a lot of our programming. So I'd like to introduce to you now Dr. Alex Johnson. He was not expecting this, so please, Dr. Johnson, would you come up? And Professor Reed, would you join us on stage? Good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, I like that. You all are doing much better with that good morning. That's what's happening. Uh, first, I would like to say a couple of things about today, April 13th. My message is all about threes. There are three notable events from this date in history. In 1963-64, Sidney Poitier became the first African-American male lead actor to win an Academy Award and Oscar. In 1983, Harold Washington became the first black mayor of Chicago. Then we look at 1997, Tiger Woods, the youngest man to win at the Masters. So today, April 13th, we're here to recognize a man that has been special to me and most of the people that you see on the stage. Dr. Alex Johnson began his notable career with us as a campus president in 1993. When he came here to the Metro campus, uh, I was a former student that came back. And when I came back, I met this brother. He was holding court in the gym. He liked to play basketball. I'm going to say I was blocking the shots and doing all that, <laughs> but I'm not gonna take that license today. Doc leads by example. He's a walk around leader. At the Metro campus, I used to see him in the cafeteria. I would see him going through the library. I would see him, and you can always walk up and talk to him. 
You know, that process inspired me to change my leadership style and become someone that's more approachable, more personable. You know, Doc did 10 years with us here at the Metropolitan Campus, and then he moved on to kind of hone his craft, I'd say. He spent four years in New Orleans at Delgado, where he helped really with that relief effort from the hurricane. You know, that is a very notif noticeable and noteworthy event and undertaking. If you all remember the hurricane, Katrina was not a good thing for New Orleans, and they're still recovering. Then he moved on to Allegheny County, or the County of Allegheny Community College in Pittsburgh. <laughs> he did five years over there, and then he came back to us. In 2013, when he came back to us as the college-wide president, he began to look at ways to be more innovative with our college. He increased the graduation rates. He began to do pathways into the community that would help people come into our doors here at Tri-C and begin to gain some of the things that he helped me gain as a student. So one of the things I'd like to share, another thing I'd like to share with you is in all of his noteworthy accolades, all of the noteworthy things that he's done, he's never lost his sense of touch with everyone. You know, he's here today, standing with us. This man's getting ready to retire. He, got, he doesn't have time for this. <laughs> but he always does find time. And I appreciate that about Dr. Johnson. So to shorten this up, we, the organizers of the Black Brown Male Summit, would like to say and honor you with a heartfelt thank you for all the things that you've done for me personally and us as a collective. With that in mind, we'd like to offer you something that will assist in you changing your lapel pen <laughs> and capturing your new chain. This heartfelt award from us to let you know we love and appreciate you. Thank you. This is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, quite a surprise. <clears throat> uh, when I was asked to come to the <clears throat> Uh, summit, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> <laughs> among other things. When I was asked to come to the summit today, <clears throat> I thought it was um, the usual opportunity to, for me to extend uh, a welcome to all of you and to convey my deep appreciation to these outstanding men uh, for the tremendous job that they continue to do to make certain that you all get what you need to be successful. I'm so very, very proud of them. Uh, and to be recognized and, and honored in such a significant way with this wonderful gift is not only an honor, uh, but is very, very humbling indeed. I am so delighted to see so many of you in this room today who have accepted the responsibility for your own personal and educational growth. And I can't think of a better institution than Cuyahoga Community College or the great group of gentlemen who are standing side by side to help you get through that process. Um, I will tell you that my journey has not been a straight line. Uh, it has been circuitous, much like what you're experiencing in your lives. I grew up in the stamp of a segregated town, Concord, North Carolina, uh, during a time when black folk were not allowed to mingle with white folk. So we lived in a separate community. Uh, we had a school with textbooks that were handed down. Our library, very small, didn't have a lot of holdings. Our church community was very, very small uh, indeed and only black folk attended where I went. Uh, and we had a small recreation area that included a pool that was so small that only a handful of people could get in at any time during the sweltering hot of the summer days. But I learned, I, I, I learned even in that environment, um, I gained knowledge from those 
secondhand textbook. I joined the world of ideas and the life of the mind from reading the books that I was able to check out in that small diminutive library. I found spiritual comfort and guidance in that church where only black people attended. And I developed physically and personally by frolicking in that very small swimming pool that was available in our community. What I'm saying by sharing that story is that all of us in this room have had challenges, some more than others. But it's always important as you look at these challenges, also look at the opportunity that it provides you to reach higher levels of personal growth and educational attainment. COVID-19 taught us that here at this institution. We turned on a razor's edge in a laser-like fashion to transform this institution to ensure that all of you could experience your education virtually. And we're taking, making other strides to ensure that we have greater access in the community, that we have opportunities for you to develop your leadership skills and things of like that. So it's, I'm so very, very proud of that. As I consider my next journey in life, Cuyahoga Community College, where I've spent almost 25 years, will continue to be near and dear to me, and most notably, this campus, the Metropolitan Campus, which is a portal to not only opportunity, but significant engagement in this great community that we call Cleveland. I want to thank all of you so very, very much indeed for this wonderful, wonderful honor. And um, the only thing I can share, say to you right now is that continue to do great things, work hand in hand, and know that if your rewards are not now, they will be in the advancement and growth that these young people, men in particular, will uh, achieve. So I want to thank you all so very much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Right, again, um, thank you, Dr. Johnson, for those words of, of inspiration um, and also your, your vision uh, to be able to have this particular type of program be here at Cuyahoga Community College. Um, to tell you all a little bit of a backstory about this, um, this particular program was at uh, Hillsboro's College in Tampa, Florida. It was called the Black and Brown Male Summit. And one of the things that Dr. Johnson said or his vision uh, stated was that it was important for us to be able to bring that type of work to Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so again, thank you for your vision. Thank you for your support um, as we continue to uh, work in your, your legacy and in your honor. Uh, and so what I want to do now is I want to uh, introduce our, our events uh, guest speaker, uh, Councilman Richard Starr. Uh, Richard Starr represents Ward 5, including Central, Kinsman, and Midtown neighborhoods and part of downtown in North Broadway and Slavic Village. Before his nomination to city council, he was recognized as a leader in Cleveland's central community for grassroots activism and commitment to creating positive change. Councilman Starr is a graduate of Baldwin Wallace University, where he earned a master's of business administration and a bachelor's of arts in sports management. He's also a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Born and raised in Wards, five, Wards 5's King Kennedy Public Housing Estates, Councilman Starr's lived experience of poverty and violence during his youth led him to the safe confines of the King Kennedy Boys and Girls Club. His love for sports and community service grew and fueled his career path. 
He began working for the Boys and Girls Club in 2008, working his way up to through the various positions to his most recent position as a director of sports and recreation for the Boys and Girls Club of Northeast Ohio. Councilman Starr's passion for sports and serving in the community led him to become a volunteer of youth football and also a mentor in Ward 5, serving his community in multiple capacities and impacting the lives of many. He used his voice to speak out against violence and address the community's needs. For example, during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, he organized a unity peace march and collaborated with the Greater Cleveland Food Bank to distribute over 14,000 pounds of food. He also distributed 2,800 masks and participated in voter education initiatives. He was honored to be named the 2019 Shoes and Clothes for Kids Partner of the Year Award, and in 2018, Cleveland Central Promised Neighborhood, SI, recognized him as a champion of Central. Councilman Starr is a graduate of East Tech High School and serves on several boards, including Faith, Community Un Un United, excuse me, Credit Union, Northeast Ohio Young Black Democrats, Book Bank Young Professionals, and Telos Institute. In 2018, he was elected as Democratic Leader of Ward 5. Councilman Richard Starr. How y'all doing? Wow, it's not every day you get to go behind a, a prestigious individual who's retiring, you know. When Dr. Johnson said he's retiring, everyone couldn't believe they read that email. But today I'm here to just have a conversation. So we're gonna relax to the people at home. You can relax as well, and those in person relax as well. We're gonna have a conversation today, all right? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right now, youth, we wake up now. It's time for school, right? This is a proud moment, moment for me to be able to stand here at Cuyahoga College, Community College, at the Black and Brown Male Summit. Today I want to discuss the importance of education for black and brown. My name is Richard Starr, and I stand here in front of you today as the councilman of Ward 5, but more so as a young man, as a young adult who is striving to push the envelope. I say that to speak directly to each of you about never settling. The medium income in the city of Cleveland is $30,000. That's a fact. The medium income in my ward, Ward 5, where we stand at, is 15000 And even in the central neighborhood, as we go deeper into Ward 5, the medium income is 10000 So youth, when I speak to you, we got some major issues. I want you all to accept the challenge here and at home to push the envelope. A change for yourself will be a greater change for your family because you will break the cycle of generational poverty. By performing well in the classroom, I encourage you all to innovate or go beyond accepted boundaries, to do the things you dream of and never limit yourself to being put into a category that's not standardized for excellence. When I was a child growing up in the low-income public housing of King Kennedy, my neighborhood wasn't the best in living environment, but my mom made the best of it. My mom was a single-parent mother, raising six children on her own, only earning $11,000 yearly to raise all of us. She did the best that she could do, and I thank her to this day for taking a stance and working on multiple jobs and providing for us. My mother always kept the roof over our heads, clothes on our back. She fed us every day, because you know I'm going to eat. And she made sure that we always understood one thing, go to school every day and bring her back home good grades. The sacrifices a single parent must make every day is tremendous. Attending college for my mom was a long shot, because when she walked the stage, she was carrying me but she already had my older brother, so she had two children, and that was in 1988. Um, before she received her high school diploma, she didn't know what to do. She had dreams, she had goals, 
but she had to make sacrifices for her children. My father wasn't around. He was incarcerated. In fact, my father has been incarcerated in and out of prison since I was in the first grade. As every other child and as other every male, as my childhood grew up, went to prison. My uncle, my cousin, my younger brother, everyone. But I was determined to break that cycle. Living in my neighborhood, there was a trend growing up in the King Kennedy hood. There was not many people in the neighborhood who encouraged one to do better. My neighborhood had people who were proud of the fact that their entire family lived in poverty or lived in what we call the projects. The term projects came from being called a stepping stone for families to have affordable housing, not permanent housing. We have to break that cycle, you hear me? As a child, I wanted to make it out my neighborhood, so I worked hard in school, at home, and now I work hard day in and day out in our community to provide opportunities that are meaningful for not just the youth, but residents of War 5. Today, I want to say congratulations to you. You here hearing some great information about you and how you can perform better. And I want to make sure every one of you understand, never, never take the moment or opportunity to do great to be less fortunate. Take the stance to understand that we are here to do our job and perform well in our classroom no matter where we are at. Now I'll ask you at home, I'll ask you at here, can we have a conversation? Okay, well society has its own belief that when you enrolled in high school, you will not graduate. Some of you will drop out because you want, to, want the fast money. So you get involved in the streets, start hustling. Society thinks some of you don't belong in college. These are just some of the few stereotypes that you will face on your long journey to walk across another prestigious stage that you will one day graduate from. When you receive that high school diploma, I want you to remember to continue to push that envelope. Prove everyone wrong. You might have family members who love you, but don't know how to support you on your journey of excellence because you're experiencing something they have never seen or done before. How can they understand you if they never took in your step in your foot or shoes? So we have to show grace to others. Continue your journey and still love them. Some you may have to leave in, love them from a distance as you continue your journey to push the envelope. No matter what the level of education you are seeking, I want you to remember and understand these key components for success. Time management. Dr. Terry Webb could tell you about that with me in time management when I was some of your ages. You will be taking on additional responsibility and changing relationships, being able to manage your time to do everything is very important. When you must be at somewhere at 8 o'clock, make sure you go to bed at night. Make sure it be a reasonable time. We can't be on social media all night and I know I got to be to school. Less playing and acting up will help you to get to be able to perform at the next level for your success. Strive to never fall behind in anything you do. Understand that personal freedom and extra time can be costly if you don't manage your time effectively. Changing relationships is when you deal with in high school. You know how you have some of your friends that were your, your, your day ones and now you're trying to go on something great and now you have relationships with a different group of individuals that are not the same ones that you came up with you know, when you start from the bottom. But I'm gonna tell you, when you start from the bottom, you need different people to help you make it to the top. Don't let stress get you down. It's gonna be rough. We all face challenges. As you face on new challenges, welcome them with open arms. And be sure to take care of your business so that you will graduate on time to become great. Allow your mentors from your school to guide you. Just because you don't know is no longer an excuse. Be willing to accept constructive criticism that can help you in the long run. For the past 14 years, I have been an activist working as a youth development professional at the Boys and Girls Club. I believe that if you want change in anything you must do, you must be that change. In 2017, I got off the couch and said I was running for councilman. In 2017, I lost that election. 
But every loss is not a lesson because some losses become a lesson that can teach you how to take a life assessment. After an evaluation of my life after that loss in the election in 2017 for city council, I decided that my high school diploma was just not enough. I got on the phone, called my mentors, and I said I need to go back to Ball and Wallace. I believe God was taking me through a storm because if I didn't go back and did that assessment, I would never went back to school. I decided to take my degree, take myself to school and finish my degree. And in 2018, I started my journey of completing that degree after dropping out for seven and a half years. While working full time and taking classes daily, I was able to graduate from Ball and Wallace with my bachelor's in sports management and business management in December of 2019. After graduation, I said, you know what? That's not enough. I decided to enroll in Ball and Wallace graduate school to pursue my MBA. And in July of 2021, while working full time, I went to school full time, joined the greatest fraternity ever created, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And I launched my campaign to be the councilman for Ward 5 because I said it's time for me to get off the bench and off the couch and make change in my community. The way we address the, the lack of classroom success is by collaboration and partnership. We must all work together to provide the resources that are needed to help black and brown students. Resources and making sure there are after school programs such as the wonderful Boys and Girls Club, making sure they are available in every community we must find ways to fund mentorship programs that help guide students, guide students striving to continue their education, and we must do that immediately. So today I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my roller coaster road and my short life of 33 years, but I also want you to understand that as councilman, as an activist, as a leader, I will always be here for black and brown students, and I want you to understand that we're going to make it, but we just have to work together. Thank you. I'm Richard Starr. Thanks, bro. Thank you, Councilman Starr. We really appreciate that message. Um, I'm going to share some information with you all now around financial literacy, financial management. One of the things I, I want you all to understand with this message that I want to share is that we all can do this. You know, Doc said earlier, you know, things don't happen in a straight line. You know, we don't go through a straight, drawn out process to get where we want to go without a bump, a curb, a hiccup, or something happening. So as you begin your journey to wherever you're going from this point, understand that the, the swerves that you've seen in the past, they're not gone. There'll be some more coming, but you can get through them. You can become better. You can do better. You can become whatever you want to become. So when I put this slide deck up, one of the things I'm gonna talk to you about is just your dollars and how to make things make more sense for you. you now, as the councilman said, Hey, I grew up in Kansas, Mount Pleasant. This little suit I'm wearing and all the little stuff you may see me with, I didn't have that as a young person. You know, I was stealing stuff. I was hustling. I did all the things that people do. You know, when they're in the neighborhood, trying to make it happen. But people like Dr. Johnson helped me understand that there's more to it than just that. And the idea of mentorship, I think you all have to become aware that if you don't ask the question, you won't get what you need. Find some people that are doing what you want to do and become an attachment to them because they'll help you get to the next level. All right? So let's talk about this idea of making sense out of the things that we're doing. Now, when I talk about future college students, you could be sitting here right now, and I'm assuming most of you are already enrolled in college. You don't have to be a future student. This stuff is applicable to whoever you are. It's applicable to me right now. 
<laughs> right? So you never grow old, too old to hear this. One of the things I learned later in life was I should understand where I want to go and then start on my path to get there. Begin any journey with your end in mind. Because if you don't understand where you're going, <laughs> grandma used to say any road will get you there. Understand where you want to go. And as you begin your travel, begin to find people that will help you along that process. People that have done it already. The idea about higher education and funding it, when I came to school five years ago, um, we didn't have any information that I knew of. I was out here just trying to do it. So I signed up for all the, 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 the government money that they would give me. But it wasn't free money. It was called loans. And they were willing to give me those loans, man. I was getting loans. I bought a little car. You know what I mean? It was good. Or I thought it was. I actually did the wrong thing with the money. So I kept compiling debt. Mm -hmm. So some of the things I'll share with you all today will help you understand how to manage your dollars and will also help your dollars grow and work more efficiently for you. So again, when we look at higher ed or anything that we do, usually we learn it from someone in the neighborhood. And if they haven't done what we want to do, how are they the right person to talk to? One of the things that I have to stress for you all is when you want to do something, you understand where you want to go, go and talk to people that have done it. You know, right now we got the World Wide Web. You can find almost anyone that has done or is doing what you want to do. Begin to look for those people. Begin to talk to those people. Because trial and error are going to happen. But if you're going to go through trial and error, you want it to be something that is manageable and won't throw you off track too far. That makes sense? Yes. That makes sense, man? You sure? So our family, our friends, great people to talk to, but if they don't know what we need to know, find the people that know it. Read, read, read. So important. And as I mentioned, Doc has a couple of books and I've read them. And when you begin to look at and think about the things that people have done, people that are where you want to go, although I do not want to be an administrator at a college, I just want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> I love my role as a professor. Uh, but those people can help you along your path. So make sure that you read, you talk to people to help you find your way to your better you. What do you want to be? Where can you get more information? How much education do you need? Begin to assess these things. You know where you want to be, or you'll begin to discern that in your time. But the education piece and some of the career and trade information, you need to talk to people that are where you want to go. They'll help you. One of the things that I learned after a lot of trial and error is that people love to talk about themselves and how they can help you do what they've done. That's why as a mentor, my mentees love me, because I'll talk to them all day about what it is they want to do, if I know about it. And the things I don't know, I have brothers that I send them to all the time, because they know the things I don't. So begin to look at this process, whether it's education, whether it's career, whatever it is, find the people that know what you want to know or what you need to know, and let them make your road a little smoother, a little easier. They'll do that for you. All right, so what about this money thing? How many of you have a process for managing your money that works for you? And I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about you know, the, the envelope under the mattress thing, although my grandmother used to have jars where she threw her money in for different things. And it worked for her. She kept her bills paid, it was great. But today, things are a little bit more complicated, can be. It can be more sophisticated if you look at your future, not just about month to month. So begin to look and think about the idea of creating a budget. 
In that budget, you should have a line item that says savings, future, or, or whatever you want to call it. One of the things I try to stress to people that I counsel is begin to pay yourself first. Work to pay yourself first. You don't have to pay yourself $1,000 every time you get $2,000. Now pay your bills, but pay yourself. And begin to build your savings plan or your savings account or whatever you want to call it so that as you begin your journey again, part of your thought process is always about integrating all of your money into this pathway that will take you to where you want to be in the future. Does that make sense? All right, so what about this idea of budgeting? <clears throat> we talk about budget. I, you know, I've been hearing that word for as long as I can remember, but I never knew what to do with it. I thought it was just a thought process. Didn't talk to the right people. But when you begin to look at a, a budget, it helps you understand where you are with your money. It increases your awareness of how your money is being utilized from day to day. So begin to look at a budget for what it is. It helps you understand where you're spending too much money. You don't need to spend all your money to hang out. And I'll tell, I'll tell you guys a quick story. I only have a few minutes. I thought the best way to use my money at one time was to get that little check and then go have a good time. Right? You with me, baby? OK. And once you begin to do it like that, you find that you miss some things. Follow a simple chart. Follow a simple budget. It'll help you use your money more wisely. And this is a Microsoft Word document, uh, a table that I just threw three columns on and however many lines I needed to go down, how many rows I needed. So anyone can put this together. Use it month to month, week to week, however you want to use it, but make it make sense for you. So the idea of budgeting helps you build wealth. Start right now. Start where you are. Right now, you guys have many. There's apps all over the place that round up your, your money. If you spend some money on a credit card, it rounds it up to the next dollar. Begins to help you save that way. You all know more than I do, probably. But begin to utilize these things. Do your research. Make sure it's what you want it to be. And then jump on it. I don't know about you, but I like money. And I want to keep as much as mine as I can. Bankrate.com, great place to look for financial resources. So if you don't remember much of what I said today, remember Bankrate.com when you want to look at ways to manage your money much more efficiently. It's there for you. Be smart. You know, I feel that I'm a relatively intelligent fellow. But when I started this game, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, man. I ain't gonna lie. Being in the neighborhood, and I mean start as a young person. Being in the neighborhood, all I could do was watch the guys who were hustling. I'm like, oh man, you know, that brother just got a Cadillac. Get me one nose. I thought that was what it was. You know, it wasn't what it was about, but I thought it was. You know, and now, doing what I've done, I've, I'm an entrepreneur, I, I, I'm a college professor, I do all these things over the last 30 years or so. I've had Cadillac, I've had BMWs, I've had, you know, Yukons, I've had all that stuff. Because I didn't have my structure, I didn't have my thinking properly grounded. Listening to Warren Buffett, brother drive, was driving a 30-year-old car, billionaire. Why? Because he knew all you need a car for is to get where you are to where you're going. You don't have to spend $80,000 for four wheels. You can get a nice whip for 10 grand or less. And it'll take you the same places that you know the brother in that Cadillac or that Benz or that BMW goes. I drive a pickup truck. Love my pickup truck. 12 years old. 
I got up this morning looking like I look right now. Your vehicle is not what defines you. Your character defines you. So begin to structure what you're going to do. Every week you should have a plan to make something happen. Begin to look at that. Make your life account for something. Be smart. Manage your process. Understand that everything you do have implications later. I'm going to let that set for a minute. So begin to do things that make more sense for your future. If you want a positive, strong future. If you want a negative future, you can do the same thing. You can manage a bad process. And it, you end up in a bad place. Or you can manage a better process and end up somewhere that will be more applicable to who you want to become. Assess your long and short term goals. Begin to look at what it will take you to get to where you want to be. And because the road is not straight, there's going to be curves, there are going to be bumps. Make assessments, make changes as you go forward. Don't let your path be deterred by those bumps that you're going to experience. And sometimes you may need to do a, a total shift to change what you're doing, what you're thinking, how you're thinking, so that you can get to where you want to go. Make whatever it is you're doing, make it relevant. So this idea of money, <laughs> like I said, I could, you can drive whatever you want. You know, my son owns an automotive repair shop now in, in uh, Maple Heights. He used to look at me and say, Dad, you this and you do that. And that. OK. And now he wants to do some of the things that I've done back in the day. But I tell him, I say, James, man, listen, you have a great thing here. Prepare yourself for the future, man. Don't live right now. Yeah, be comfortable, be happy, but don't, don't spend all your money on stuff. Build something with that money. Make it something that you can use later on. Use your passion to make you rich. Many people become millionaires based on their passion. So whatever you're doing, make it relevant, make it make sense. And it'll do the things that you want it to do for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're here to help. When you're on a, on a college campus particularly, talk to your professors, talk to your teachers, talk to your counselors, talk to the people that have done what you want to do. Now here at Tri-C, now I mentioned earlier that we have all these pathways to get here. We have degrees in everything, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, we're even doing trades. You know, I started out in the trades. I was a commercial roofer for a long time. Find out what it is you want to do and get there. Hell, we're here to help you. I'll talk to anybody about anything. And I know these brothers over here will do the same thing. So talk to the people that, once again, have done what you want to do. Talk to people that can help you with your aha moments. We can help you define that process. Just like with your cash, we can help you make it make sense. You know, I started a scholarship fund, a memorial scholarship fund just recently. We'll do our first disbursement in spring of 2023 in the name of my godfather. James Mosley Memorial Scholarship Fund. I named my first son after him, actually. Think about that. How do you give back? Understand being smart, managing your money well, being the person that you want to become requires a lot of thinking. So if you want to look at what I do now, when I do my thing, I want to help people understand that they have to bank with the right people. They have to make great decisions. They have to ask a lot of questions. They have to constantly think and then evaluate, track what they're doing, where they're going, so they can get where they want to be. And talk to people that have been there, that are there. They'll help you make it happen. I can send this link, these links to anyone that wants them, uh, but the one you should know, because you're here in this room, is our Tri-C link. Go to Tri-C College Credit Plus get information from that space. You know, we have college now here. They have money for you. Uh, and then there's grants and scholarships all over the place. So begin to utilize free money that you never have to pay back. Get as much of that free money as you can. Then if you need to complement with a loan, you know, get a little loan. 
but get the free money first. My college debt hit six digits because I didn't understand the free money. So part of my financial management had to revolve around me paying back all those loans that I thought were great when I was driving my little hoopty that I bought with some of that money. Manage your money. And your money will help you manage your life. This is my contact information. If you all need or want to talk to me or there's someone in our space that you may have heard about or spoke with today and you don't remember who they are or how to get to them, hit me up. I'll talk to you. I'll help guide you in the right direction, hopefully. Networking is what you make it. Make your network work in your favor. So that's all I got. I think I may have run over time, too, but hopefully it was, it was valuable information for you. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, give me a call. I don't have my agenda up here, gentlemen. Who's next? Victor? So comes your next presenter. What? Did I call you Victor? No, that's okay. This okay. <laughs> is Danny, man. Danny, that's all right. I don't know why I called you Victor, brother. No, that's all right. What's no up? Problem. All right. What you got? College exploration. So as the, the councilman uh, Starr had mentioned, uh, making a change in yourself, making a change for your future, and as uh, Professor Reed just talked about college, uh, let, let's talk about how to explore colleges and, and which one is the best for you so that you can make that investment in yourself and for your future. So what, what do you do when you're going to buy a pair of shoes? Try them on. What do you do when, you, when you're going to buy a new suit or a pair of jeans? Try them on, right? So the point is you should try explore and see what colleges are out there and what, what, what do they have to offer you. So th there are many different opportunities out there, two-year schools, technical schools, four-year colleges. So you got to find out which one is the best for you. What do you think is maybe one of the first questions you should ask when, when you're exploring colleges? Any idea? Very good, very good. And what else? How much is it going to cost? Do they have my major? Do they, have, do they offer what I'm interested in? So that, that also should be one of the top questions. Do they even offer what I'm interested in? Are you interested in a trade? Are you interested in a, uh, a pre-law degree, pre-med degree? Are you interested in something in healthcare or something in engineering? Uh, do you want a, 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 a four-week training program so you can get out into the workforce? So you got to explore and, and see if it fits. So first, do they even offer what I'm interested in? Do they have my major? How accessible is it? How close is it? Uh, do, do I need to drive a long distance? Do they have a flexible schedule? Do they have early morning classes, evening classes? Do they have online classes? So depending on what your needs are, you should ask, th those, are, uh, those are some of the additional questions that you should ask. And another important question, how much does it cost? So you should probably know ahead of time how much is it going to cost you and how are you going to pay for it? As Professor Reed mentioned, uh, there are different scholarships that you can apply for, but will, will the scholarships that I apply for and the financial aid that I apply for, will it cover all of my expenses? So those are just some of the things that you need to, to take into consideration be, while you're exploring, while, you, while you're uh, uh, looking to see what colleges or what programs are out there for you. What kind of support services do they offer? Are they in, as interested in my future as I am? Do they offer tutoring? Do they offer other programs like the B Black American Council, like the Hispanic Council? Do they, ha do they have counselors and advisors who will follow up with me to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track? So it's not just about the school or, 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 or the name, uh, or, or do they have what I offer? Yes, those are important, but you have to ask some, 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 some follow-up questions as well. Are they as interested in me as I am? Are they as interested in my future as I am? Again, 
things that you need to explore before you make that final decision. Here at Tri-C, one of the many good options that are, that are available to you, there are many different programs. We have over 200 programs that you can take advantage of. So, so those of you who are in high school, those of you who are not in high school and, and starting your, your, your uh, college career, there are many opportunities available to you here at Tri-C. Over 200 programs, short-term programs, one semester, one-year programs, two-year associate degrees. And the beauty of, of a community college like Tri-C is if you are interested in your four-year degree, your bachelor's degree, we still have you covered. You can start at a community college and then transfer your credits. Our credits will transfer anywhere, anywhere in Ohio, anywhere in the country. Here at Tri-C, we're very accessible. Uh, four different campuses, plenty of online classes, very, a very flexible schedule. And last but not least, we're very affordable. So a community college is a great option for individuals to make that investment in themselves, make that change for their future. Uh, community colleges ten tend to be lower cost than the four-year schools. And uh, a public community college like Tri-C uh, will usually be your, your, your lowest cost as far as tuition is concerned, even lower than, than the, some of the technical schools. Here at Tri-C, I don't know if it's still the case, but uh, uh, recently we had the lowest tuition in Ohio. I had to double check my figures. Uh, I believe that's still the case, but uh, the point is here at Tri-C, it's, it's extremely affordable. And here at Tri-C, there's a lot of support services, community colleges, tend to have a lot of support services, and, and we, we are no different than any of the uh, uh, other community colleges where we invest in our students. So we have support services like the Black American Council, the Hispanic Council, tutoring. We have individuals who will follow up with you every semester to make sure that you're on the right track. They will reach out to you, and if you're not doing well, they will, they will follow up with you to see what, what, uh, what can be done and what, what assistance, assistance you might need. So just like you would try on a pair of shoes or try on a, a pair of jeans or try on a new uh, suit before you buy it, you should explore colleges and see what's, see what's available in your area and what do those colleges have to offer. And is it the right fit for you? Visit the colleges. Take a visit. Uh, take a tour. Meet with individuals from the admissions office, from the enrollment office. Because if you try on a pair of shoes and they don't fit, what do you, you're probably not going to buy it, right? You're not gonna, probably not going to buy that pair of shoes. You're probably not going to buy a pair of jeans that don't fit you. So by exploring, by visiting the college, that's your opportunity to see, is this the right fit for me? Is it the right feel? Do they have what I'm interested in? How much is it going to cost me? Do they have people who, who will help me pay for this, help me figure out how to pay for it? So those are all important questions that you, that you should be asking. I encourage you to explore. Here at Tri-C, we're always available to, to help you make that decision. We're always giving tours. We're always answering questions. We'll help you uh, figure out the finance part as well. So I encourage you all to, to take advantage of it. Are there any questions? Any questions about college exploration or what, 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 uh, what you should be considering or looking at? Okay, well, thank you for visiting today, and thank you for your attention, and that's it for me. Next. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ricardo Newell, and I am here today to tell you that college is easy and adulting is hard. Um, January 1 this year, um, I found out that I was, um, I was actually going to become a father. Uh, during that particular time, it was I was excited, uh, but you know, as you know, I, she went through that birthing process, um, and the months began to change. I started questioning my readiness, much like you, uh, you know, throughout your college journey. You know, the first semester was easy, the second semester was cool, and then the third one, it started to get a little rough. It started to get a little challenging. You may have had that class that made you question, like, hey, am, am I really serious about this? Do I really want this? But stick with it. Uh, it's definitely worth it. I know uh, for me during that whole birthing process, um, 
you know, as I began to see the baby grow, I found myself growing as well. Um, and I found myself, you know, stretching uh, time and time again. You know, although there were moments of, of which it was times that, that was very uncomfortable, um, that stretching really helped me to, 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 to grow as a person. It helped me to, to grow and develop my mindset. It helped me to evolve beyond, be, beyond um, the man that I was at that particular moment. Um, and then it helped me to see who I wanted to be, uh, who I wanted to become, you know, the things that I wanted to desire, the, the legacy that I wanted to establish for my family. Um, so much like yourself, you're going through that phase, you're evolving, you're stretching, um, and you're, you're, you're in that infancy stage. You know, as, um, again, as, as the baby uh, was, was expanding and growing, um, I, was, I was eager and I was excited. I was ready for the baby to arrive. But yeah, I knew uh, if the baby came earlier than the expected time frames within the nine months, I knew that the baby was gonna be, uh, was gonna have some sort of complications, being as though it wasn't fully developed. Uh, so much like your dreams, much like your college experience, don't give up on it, uh, because you may not be fully developed in that moment. Uh, this college environment, it's, 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 like, um, it's like being within a wound. It's, 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 a, it's an incubator. It's going to help to mold and shape you. It's going to help you to, to really hone in on what it is that you want to do. It's going to um, allow you to uh, put yourself in a mindset of being that uh, successful, successful individual that you want to be. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to provide you with that village that's going to help, uh, that's gonna help you know, walk you throughout that journey. So continue to hold tight. Um, and again, like that, like that infancy stage, I, I actually had the opportunity to, to speak to my brother, uh, brother Reed, um, about some things that I was dealing with, and he, he reminded me, you know, hold tight, uh, your dreams are still cooking, your dreams are still uh, within that infancy stage, so don't step out just yet. Um, you know, outside of this line of work, I'm an entrepreneur, and much like, you know, uh, uh, with, with, with like Instagram, you kind of see that that overnight success. So I'm like, you know what, I want to do it. I, I'm, I think I'm ready. Uh, I'm about to I'm about to go full time with it. But reminded myself, hey, I have a family now. I have to move smart. I have to move correctly. So I had to sit back and I had to uh, take heed uh, to uh, many of my mentors and I had to allow myself to realize that, you know, I, I probably was not ready to move forward just yet. So um, as you go throughout your, your developmental process, hold tight. Uh, do what's necessary uh, to feed your goals and dreams. Uh, what you intake um, mentally. Uh, visually, uh, is, is, very, is just as important as what you intake physically. So be mindful of the conversations that you're having with people. Be mindful of the things that you're uh, uh, that you're receiving. Be mindful of your environment. You know, be mindful of uh, uh, negativity. Uh, so you definitely want to be mindful of those things. Uh, stay strong. Be mindful. And again, take personal inventory of 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 your thoughts, of your emotions. Again, like I said, when I was going through. Uh, the process of becoming a father, I questioned that whole fight or flight mentality really kicked in. And, you know, for a moment, I'm like, I'm not ready. Um, you know, the baby's just going to have to do <laughs> without me. Uh, but, you know, I had to sit back and I had to uh, remind myself, hey, it's important for fathers to be uh, within their child's life. Uh, so I had, to, I had to do a lot of the uh, a lot of the mental work, a lot of the healing work to make sure that I was going to be able and fully prepared to be a father for my daughter. So be, like I said, take, take inventory of your thoughts and emotions. Uh, again, ask yourself, who am I? Uh, where am I at today? Uh, who do I want to become? How do I get there? Um, and when you ask yourself, how do you, how do you get there? Uh, that's when you should start um, identifying individuals who are already there, who are already successful at either being a dad, being an entrepreneur, or being a successful college student. Or you know, reach out to individuals who have already uh, surpassed you uh, on their road to success. Find a mentor. Again, many of the many of the brothers around the room, they have definitely uh, coached me in a number of different ways and provided me with a lot of different wisdom. So uh, surround yourself with a talent pool of individuals that could provide you with wisdom. Uh, let's see. And also, uh, when working with mentors, uh, don't be closed off. Don't be closed-minded. Um, allow yourself to, to be a sponge and kind of take things in. You know, oftentimes, um, the, as the saying goes, um, a, a closed a closed fist can't receive anything. Just as a closed mind, uh, or just as a closed mouth um, cannot be fed. So, uh, allow yourself to be open-minded. Um, allow yourself to to take heed of the words uh, from a mentor. Allow yourself allow that mentor um, to challenge you. Allow that mentor to coach you. Allow that mentor to offer critiques. Uh, because the old you can't can't get to new places uh, without new thought processes and new opportunities. 
so a lot of my mentors had to help me with that. Uh, some of the takeaways from, um, you know, the birthing process as it relates to uh, your journey to success. Um, don't feel bad about being selfish. Um, you know, I, when my daughter was being born, um, I had to, to take some time for myself to really understand who I was as a person. Um, and I also had to, to sacrifice uh, a lot in order to make sure that my daughter had a, a, a secure financial future. So I had to work a lot. So don't feel bad about being selfish, it's necessary. Like you all are, are, are pursuing your college degree. Um, it's gonna take a lot of time, it's gonna take a lot of sacrifices. You have to do what's best for you in order to set yourself up and your family up for future, for future success. Um, and also just know that you have to love yourself first in order to love other people. So you're never, uh, being selfish at this moment, it may feel as if you're being selfish right now, uh, but you're doing what's best for everyone. Uh, secondly, uh, never allow yourself to run empty. Uh, always uh, surround yourself with individuals that can help you fill your tank. So that's important. That's, that's why it's very important to find a mentor. Uh, again, iron sharpens iron. Always connect with individuals that can help lead and grow you. Um, so uh, again, I connected myself with mentors. I connected with myself with other fathers who have been throughout that process. Uh, I connected myself with other entrepreneurs who, you know, who have, who have embarked on that road and who have found success. So again, iron sharpens iron. Uh, secondly, uh, nurture your dream. Uh, I know a lot of you are going throughout that college process. Continue to, continue to stay strong, continue to stay college-minded, and continue to nurture that dream. Again, it's gonna be some classes that's gonna challenge you, but that's totally okay. It's, a, it's, it's all a part of the process. And again, uh, respect the time that it takes in order to, man, to manifest your dream or to manifest your level of success. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a race, it's a marathon, so take your time. Um, and I, I, again, I can't, I can't stress it uh, enough. Mentorship is incredibly, incredibly valuable. Um, and again, don't be misled uh, by the opinions of others. Uh, you, know, you know what your goals are, you know where you wanna be. So continue to hold on to that dream, uh, continue to hold on to your goals and pursue it with everything in you. And I wish you all the best, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This brings us to the part of the program where we get to hear from you in Q&A to see if uh, there are any burning questions that you have. If you do, we would have you just come up to the microphone. There's also someone monitoring the chat to be able to answer questions as well. And while you do that, I'm seeing you filling out the evaluations, which is good. Yes, you can just leave them on the table. Someone will collect them. I hope that you heard the theme that ran throughout all of the speaking today. And that is you have to have someone to help you get to where you're trying to go. But as a person trying to get there, how can you as a marksman hit a target that you cannot see? So we want you to think about that. But the thing that goes through it is that your net worth is going to be connected to your network. And the network is the people around you that can answer all of the questions to get, to get you to where you're trying to go. And you know that there are going to be challenges. People spoke about the challenges that you're going to experience. But when you go through those challenges, it's not what you go through that matters. It's what you're traveling in the protection of the people around you to help you get through everything that you need to get through. So I'll just say that people are like elevators. And what do elevators do? They bring you up or they take you down. So it's all going to be about your real plain choices. So no matter what you go through, whatever challenge that you have, we're here for you to help you do that. So, do we have any questions that are in the audience? Yes, just come to the microphone. All right. How you doing this morning? Good morning. I got a FAFSA I, a, a student aid report that I'm going to need some assistance with uh, as far as completing mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that the information is correct. Yeah, our financial aid office will help with that. Danny, you have something to say about that? Yeah, well, Okay. I'll take a look at what's going on and, and we'll, we'll meet you the way you need to be. All right, thank you. Good. All right. 
thank you for that question because it doesn't really matter what your question is. If we don't have the answer, we're going to get someone to get the answer for you. Are there any other questions? You have one? Can we take uh, two classes at one time? Yes. Like two different ones? Yes, you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to take classes based on what you want, based on what you need. You'll speak with a counselor, an advisor, and we'll be able to get you squared away with the process. And get the proper prerequisites. Yes, thank you, Dr. Stewart. Are there any other questions? Are there any questions in the chat? No questions? Okay, with that, again, we'd like to thank you for coming, and I'm going to turn it over. I have a question. You do have a question? Yes, sir. So, uh, outside of mentorship, uh, what are some keys to success, both religiously um, and in general? The success key means to look at exactly what it is that is expected of you. Once you find out what the thing is that you have to do, then you want to know, okay, what does this mean for me? And as you start thinking about that, finding out exactly what's expected so that you can meet those expectations. So that's whether it's in your career, whether it's the process of getting started, whether it's in the classroom and the academic assignments that you have. Just knowing what's expected beforehand and then going through the process of being able to meet those expectations. Okay. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our very own Dr. Terry A. Webb, Vice President of the Black American Council. All right, Dr. Webb. Well, good morning, everyone. I understand that it's, you've been sitting for a while, I understand, but it hurts for me to jump around and move around, so I'm not going to do it. But I'm glad that you are here. And I'm closing out, so we're near the end of this. But I wanted to close out on a summarization of what we have been through today. The topic of this conference is healing and inspiring men. Black and brown men overall have been marginalized, hunted, debased, devalued, and not allowed to always achieve the greatness that is innate in each and every last one of us because of the society that we live in. However, because we have been empowered by up on high, we are still here doing great, magnificent things. As you heard from that Con the council person, Richard Starr, speak. I remember him when he was a little boy. I worked with him when he started at Baldwin Wallace, then college, and I helped him start a black male organization, and he was rough around the edges, as I was, too, when I got into case in Upward Bound, because I had the privilege of growing up in the suburbs of 79th and Kinsman. So uh, some of y'all caught that. That was the suburbs. Garden Valley was a suburb then. We were bougie. We rode the bus with pride. And the thing of it is, and I have, it's 17 kids in my family. I'm the best looking of all six of my brothers, <laughs> but that's not the point. They all over six feet tall, I'm just good looking. But the thing about it is, black and brown men have been oppressed, but today you have seen personally for yourself, young men, Individuals such as myself, when my fifth grade teacher told me I would never be anything, and now I have alphabet soup after my name. Don't ever let anybody ever tell you what you cannot do unless they're willing to do three things. Lead you to where you're trying to go, follow you to where y'all trying to get to, or shut up and get out your way. So in essence, today you have seen these magnificent men that are here today who've overcome great obstacles, who've overcome poverty and indignation in Cleveland, having single parents, and my mother of all is a felon. Was, she's deceased, I buried her in October. And my mother would leave us in houses in the middle of the winter without utilities. I slept in my coat and got up and went to school the next day with the same clothes on. But the good thing is in the 70s, we looked real bad anyway. So nobody knew that I had the same thing on. The collar of my shirt was down here and nothing matched. But see, we need to inspire each other. We need to stop fighting with one another. As you saw, this network improves net worth. See, these men that are here in these fine linen and suits and things that they have, 
We all work together because we are an unstoppable justice league of men who work together to help us all. See, I don't need to know everything. I need to know who does know. I need to know I have a relationship and I can turn my back on this brother and this brother got my back. So instead of us fighting with each other, we want to heal. We have got to start working on a manner where we learn to get along with each other. I don't have to agree with everything that you say, but I have to respect the right that you are a black man or a brown man just like me and you bring value to every room that you come into just like I do. Each and every last one of you inside of you is a billion dollars. And the only thing you could ever stop it from coming out of you is four things. The attitude that you present to the world that would allow the world to be willing to work with you. The people that you associate with. Now, you know what? I heard this expression when I was growing up. Garbage in, garbage out. Do you understand, young men, that there are some people that are not worthy to be your friend? There are some people that are not worthy to be in your social circle. You only become contaminated when you run with dirt. So you need to value yourself. You are clean. As they say in that old song, you're so fresh and clean, clean. Because you want success. If you really want to be successful, let me hear somebody say yes. yes. Oh, say it like you mean it. Yes. 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 You want to be rich? Yes. Oh, uh, want to be wealthy? Yes. You want to be powerful? Yes. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now, you said yes. What are you going to do to do it? Yes. Professor Reed taught you how to be rich. He's rich. That's why he's on our team. <laughs> My brother Newell talked to you about managing yourself. But believe it or not, people talk about obstacles. There is no man that is out there trying to stop you. What stops most of you is what comes out of here right. and what's missing in here. Right. If you got this and this is together and this works with it, you can't be stopped. You're an immovable object that can take over the world. Now, I remember my father and grandfather telling me, Hell will freeze over before a black man become president. Hell froze over twice, and last Thursday it froze over again when a black woman was nominated to the Supreme Court and affirmed. So the devil got three reprieves in all of eternity where he got some air conditioning. You know what? It's time for you to stop selling yourself short. It's time for you to heal. All of us have trauma in our past. It's time for you to start inspiring one another. It's time for you to start taking advantage of mentorship. It's time for you to step up and take advantage of the schooling that you're getting. Because in order for people not to take the money that Professor Reed can show you how to obtain, you have to have something in your head that teaches you how to keep it and have a skill set that allows you to keep making money so that people will call you to go talk to other people like some of us do, and we walk away with checks for 2500 or more just for running our mouth for an hour. And we get to look this good and do this. He did roofing. I did that for about an hour. I was an electrician. And I stopped doing it one day when I went into a house. Talking about healing. I got into the wall of a house. And I thought it was plaster that was on me and my buddy. We came out of the house and downstairs. My coveralls were actually encrusted with roaches. So thick that you thought I had a fur coat on that we got out in the middle of the street on 93rd and was jumping around. We was doing the old school Superman, spinning around to take our clothes off in the street. So all the old ladies got a free show because we were down to our drawers and them clothes stayed in the street. I couldn't take that home. My wife would have killed me. But the thing of it is, we all have had experiences that have changed our lives. What you've been through refined you to get you to where you want to go. Your daddy wasn't there, but somebody was. Your mama didn't do right, but somebody did. You didn't know what to do, but there is someone. See, as black and brown men, we have a tendency to keep our mouth closed because we have two diseases that are infringing upon our right to be successful. One is EGO, and the other one is PRIDE. Your ego will leave you homeless and hungry and dejected. Your pride will keep you from getting the things that you need because you won't open your mouth up, because you don't want nobody to know that you don't know. I'm going to tell you this too, then I know I'm going to have to sit down and shut up in a minute. Never tell yourself no. That's somebody else's job. Everybody that's ever told me no, I know I no longer need to talk to them. Don't sell yourself short. 
Don't ever believe that you can't. I don't care what they told you. I've been told I was stupid. I made it possibly because I'm so good looking, but I'm also intelligent, believe it or not, because I never thought I would have an advanced degree in psychology, a terminal one, in counseling and psych. And that's what I do for the college. And I, I specialize in helping people overcome self-imposed limitations. I believe you can do anything you want to do. And if you allow us mentors into your life and tear down them walls, we can't tell you what to want, but we sure can put you in line with the people that can help you get it. You heard that. That's our goal. And never, ever, ever think that you can't. If you want to, you will. And you can at all times. Tri-C is not the place where futures begin. Tri-C is where lives can change. And college is where I met my best friends, not in high school. Because we still friends today. We help raise each other's kids. Because we're a network of power. Because we all had a common goal. And just like you, when he was talking about in his neighborhood, since I grew up in the suburbs, I have six brothers, three are career criminals. And it's sad, one of my brothers, I hadn't seen him in 20 years, he came to our mother's funeral. This, I don't even recognize him. He's so heavy into substance abuse and he's 64 years old. He looks horrible. But I still hugged my brother and it was like hugging a skeleton in a biology lab. And I felt sad for my brother, but my brother made that choice. I tried, in 97 I tried to save his life and he, looked, he grabbed me by my tie and pulled me over, leave me alone, I like what I'm doing. You can't make anybody be successful but you can make sure you are by doing what you need to do. But before I close, I need to thank everyone for attending in person. You have no idea how elated we are to have people we can actually look at. And some of y'all, I got the chance and the privilege to shake your hand. And, it, and we want to thank everyone that tuned in online. We want to thank Nick for taking pictures of all these picturesque people in here. And we want you to do something for us too. There are giveaways in the back of this room. Please take this stuff. There's still Snyder's potato chips and, and Takis and things left over there in the corner. I, I made y'all look with that Takis, didn't I? But uh, Tri-C ain't buying no Takis. If they do, you better not eat it. But uh, the thing of it is, is that take all that stuff. Take the food, the stuff that's in the back. And you know what? This is going to be on the YouTube for Tri-C. You know what? If Will Smith can throw us back 25 years slapping somebody on national TV, why can't you take this message that you was given today and make it viral? Take this message today that's going to be on Tri-C YouTube and send it out to everybody you know. It costs you nothing. Because postage is about to go to a dollar letter next year or something like that. This is free right now. Send it out. Nick, for the photography. And I just want you to know, every black and brown man, every man in general in America, don't ever sell yourself short. Continue to strive on, continue to push on, continue to elevate, to educate. Make sure you always associate with the right people with the proper attitude and never quit what you start and always believe in yourself that you can overcome any obstacle that's in front of you. If you're willing to put the time in, you can achieve greatness. And it's like one of these brothers said up here, and I think it was Dr. Newell, it's a process. It's a marathon. It ain't a race. I didn't get to where I am overnight. But I did see where I was going, and I never stopped going. I fell down, and I got up. And I wish you all well. Complete the evaluations. I'm going to say it in French. I'm multilingual. Complete the evaluations. Want to hear my Spanish? Complete the evaluations. Oh, German, too. Complete the evaluations. Please leave them on the table. Be mindful and check out with us. We're always up to something. We plan on having a big fashion show in the spring, summertime out here in June. We plan on even having a cipher. I just found out what that was. <laughs> we plan on having a cipher in about another month. You all are welcome to attend. This is a community college and we're here for the community. Don't ever think that you can't come here. You can reach out to any one of us that you want to that is on the screen. We're dedicated and motivated to help you achieve greatness if you're willing to allow us to walk with you. Did you all learn anything today? Did you all, were you inspired to do anything? Uh, are you great? Yes. Oh, see, y'all answered that rightly. So well, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to sit down and shut up. Thank you all for coming. Y'all are awesome, and it is good to see people in, in the flesh. All right?
God be with you all. Get that stuff back there. Get that stuff over there. Go back to where you were and have a great day. Oh, audio people, never forget you all. Uh, when y'all edit the video, I want to be 30 pounds lighter, though. All right, I slim a little bit off here, but uh, thank you all for everything you've done for us. Thank you.